Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about asexuality and how my asexual identity has influenced my parenting journey so far or if indeed it has at all. Before I get any further into this video though, let's clear up some terminology for those of you who are a little less familiar with what asexuality is and what the spectrum is. So in this video I'm going to be referring to asexuality as an umbrella term. Asexuality describes people who experience little to no sexual attraction. I might also use the term allosexual. Allosexual is the opposite of asexual, so these are people who do experience sexual attraction to people, which is a majority of the population. I might also briefly touch on aromanticism. The aromantic spectrum is kind of similar to the asexual spectrum in terms of you have aromantic, which are people who experience little to no romantic attraction to people, and the opposite end is alloromantic, which are people who do experience romantic attraction to people. I might also use the term ace as an abbreviation for asexual, Aro as an abbreviation for aromantic, and allo as an abbreviation for allosexual or alloromantic. Hopefully that brief explanation of asexuality and aromanticism is enough to get you through the rest of this video. So has my asexuality had an impact on my parenting experience so far, and if so, in what way? So when I started down this journey of becoming a solo parent by choice, I genuinely didn't think that my asexuality was going to have that much of an influence on my parenting experience. I knew that it had an influence in my decision to become a solo parent by choice, particularly a solo parent by choice quite young. I was 24 when I started trying to get pregnant and when I conceived my son. But beyond that, I really wasn't sure whether it'd have any influence on my parenting experience. My son is now almost one and reflecting back on my first year of being a solo parent, I've realized there are a few occasions where I have noticed that my asexuality has given me a little bit of a different experience as a solo parent from other solo parents who are not asexual asexual or even parents in general who are not asexual. And I thought it'd be good to do a video on this because I know I have quite a few of you guys who follow me that are either asexual, aromantic or both, who are either interested in having kids or not interested in having kids, but are curious to see what an asexual parent's experience might be like. I also know there are some of you out there who watch my videos who aren't asexual yourself, but you might know asexual people, or you're just keen to know more about different types of people's experiences. And equally, I think I have some people who know me in real life who would be curious to know about how my asexuality has maybe influenced my parenting experience so far and just curious to know more about it so either way I thought doing a video on this topic would be a good thing to do. So the first difference that I've noticed being an asexual solo parent as opposed to solo parents who are not asexual is probably the biggest one that I've managed to kind of pick out thinking back through my experiences over the last year and that is the impact of not having a partner. To me I do not feel any sense of loss at not having a partner to do this with and I quite frankly have no wish or desire to have a partner to do this with. There's no part of me that feels that that's missing on this journey. And that is different, I think, from what a lot of my solo mum friends have experienced. For all my other solo mum friends, they're all very happy that they made the decision to become solo parents and they love their children very much. But I think if they'd been given the choice of whether to have a child on their own or have a child with a partner, they would have chosen to have them with a partner if that had been an option. Whereas for me, I'm actually really glad that I had the opportunity to do this on my own. And I don't think I actually would have wanted a partner even if that had been an option. I really enjoy parenting alone and there aren't really that many other asexual parenting experiences to see out there on the internet although being part of a solo parenthood group and there are a few other asexual people who pop up from time to time. And generally I think this is something that I've seen is consistent amongst us. We don't miss having a partner, or we don't really like envisage ourselves having a partner when we have children. There's just no attachment to this idea that there needs to be two of you to have a child is I guess what I'm trying to say. I think the main difference is there's just no sense of loss having a child this way or a family this way, compared to some people who really have to grieve the process of not having a baby with a partner before they can actually go on the journey to solo parenthood. That's just something I think is different for an asexual person than it is for somebody who is not asexual. This also kind of links to the second thing that I've noticed that's different being an asexual parent to a non-asexual parent, which is as a solo parent, quite often people will ask you the question of, do you want to have a partner in the future? Or would you like to meet a partner before you have another child? Or would you consider having another child with a partner if you met somebody? Some sort of question framed around the idea of wanting a partner. And you know, I think pretty much every solo mum gets asked this at some point uh, in their life. But the main difference for me is when somebody asks me this question, my first initial reaction in my head is, what a strange question, why Why would I want a partner? And then my brain quite quickly catches up and goes, ah, that's an ally thing. Whereas I know for my non-asexual solo parent friends, they often 
they would really quite like to meet somebody and that question they'll quite happily answer with like yeah it'd be lovely if we met someone in the future but you know we're very happy with how we're doing things now whereas I like really could not care less if I met someone in the future I have no preference one way or the other I'd be very happy to parent alone for my entire um, parenthood experience or if I met someone that I connect with and you know we click and it works out great then great but I, I genuinely have no preference either way like I said from the first point I don't feel any sense of loss not having someone to do this with something else that I think might be slightly different about my experience of parenting as an asexual person as opposed to a non-asexual person although I think many non-asexual people allo people could experience this too is I just have this absolute joy at the fact that because I now have a baby when I'm pushing him out about in public I am invisible to the male gaze like I don't have to deal with cat calls or anything like that I feel so much more confident traveling out and about now because like you just go over people's heads when you have a baby like mothers in society are not seen as sexual beings and so you're automatically kind of assumed to be off the market and I just love how I can go anywhere without having to be sexualized in any way. Before I had a child, if I wanted to kind of avoid that attention, I had to quite consciously think about how I dressed. And whilst like sometimes I sort of would think, screw it, I'm gonna wear whatever I want. I like to wear really girly, like short dresses or whatever. But sometimes I would really consciously cover up, as I think all women, if we're honest, like there are times that we change our appearance to make ourselves feel safer and more secure. And if I really wanted to avoid any sort of sexual male gaze etc I would really cover myself up now I really don't have to bother I can wear pretty much anything I don't tend to wear like very revealing clothing anyway it's just not my personal style it's cool if it's yours but that combined with pushing a push chair or carrying a baby in a carrier just it completely wipes you from the male gaze so I absolutely love that but again I know that for some of my non asexual friends the feeling of no longer being a sexual being or no longer being viewed as sexy is something that they really struggle with and particularly those that want to date can sometimes find that quite difficult and also because your body changes after you've given birth. Another thing I've noticed and I think this is kind of linked to the point I just made as well is how when you have a baby your body changes and it goes through big changes in pregnancy and then afterwards and your body's never quite the same again I don't think and I think my asexuality may have had some impact on the fact that I have really cared so little about any of the changes to my body. My hair started falling out at four months postpartum it's growing back now that didn't really bother me. I'm bigger, I fit bigger clothes, doesn't bother me. Not feeling sexy or kind of like an attractive being, it just doesn't bother me. It's had no impact on me whatsoever. But for a lot of my allosexual friends, I know they have really struggled with those changes. And some have been more, more than others. Obviously everyone's experiences of parenthood is different and I'm sure there are asexual people who struggle with their body changes a bit too. But I'd be curious to know if other asexual people who have had kids have also had this experience of just not really being that bothered by your body change that much because as far as I'm aware, my body is a body, but I'm not interested in it attracting anyone else. And so as long as I'm comfortable in it, as long as I'm not in pain or anything, I'm very happy with the way that I look. And the final thing that I've sort of noticed, which to be honest, I think is partly my asexuality and partly just to do with my own general personality is that I have found the shift from singlehood to parenthood or motherhood much easier because of the fact that I'm so happy in my own company. Even though when you have a child you go from having nobody else dependent on you to somebody else who's dependent on you all the time, it can be quite a lonely experience because that baby can't talk back to you, you can't have a discussion with them, it's very different from having adult company. And I think if you're used to being someone that's kind of like always around people, always wants company, wants to go out a lot in the evenings, the shift from that to actually quite a solitary life, especially in the beginning, can be quite challenging. But for me, part of my ace identity was always that I was very happy on my own, very content on my own. My idea of a good night is staying in, cut up on the sofa with a hot chocolate and a good book. And that hasn't changed since I've had a baby. I found that shift quite easy. Now, obviously you don't have to be asexual to have that particular personality type, but I do think asexuals are in general quite good at having their own company because we like being on our own. We don't feel like we need a partner. And that has definitely made the shift to motherhood a bit easier for me. And one other final thing I will just quickly mention is just how this decision to become a solo parent very much feels like a plan A rather than a plan B. Solo parenthood 
good is very much viewed as kind of like the decision you make when you haven't met a partner and your biological clock is ticking and you want to become a mum usually it's often uh, solo mums that do this and you make the decision to have a baby on your own it's seen as like when the first option hasn't worked you do this but for asexual people this is often plan a and we're very happy with it and this feels like to me the natural way of, of doing things it feels like this is the way i was always going to have children even if i didn't necessarily know that in the past because well, there's virtually no asexual parenting representations in media that I've seen, certainly. So that's another big difference, I think, for many asexual people, is that this is usually plan A, not plan B. Not that there's anything wrong with plan B, you know, most of my friends, as I said, who are solo parents, this was their plan B, and we're all just as happy with our children, we get on so well, but it's just a subtle difference that I do think is worth mentioning. So those are the biggest differences I personally have noticed in my first year of parenting, being an asexual parent. I've recently really tried to connect more with other queer parents and I've had such a great time seeing other queer families and different setups and I think it's going to be so great particularly for Oren as he grows up to see that but also for me just having this other community that I've really tried to connect with more recently and how welcoming they've been and just how amazing that has been for me to connect with that. In a way I've often felt like I wasn't really a part of the LGBTQ plus community for quite some time or like I was just sort of on the edge of it but they've been so welcoming and I feel so at home there that I really have been able to recognise actually I do have a place there, my family does have a place here. We're all doing things a little bit differently in different ways and that's something that I have just really enjoyed recently connecting with. So if you are an asexual parent out there, you're considering becoming one, do connect with other queer families because it's just so joyful. But thank you so much for watching guys. I really hope you learned something new from this video or you found it interesting. Do please subscribe and of course a big thank you as always to my Precious Star Superstar supporters that support me every month with just a little bit of extra income. If you're interested in joining, click the join button down below and it'll show you all the extra benefits that you get. Yet. When my members go up a little bit more, I will be having an exclusive member Q&A, live Q&A session. So if you want to join in for that, be sure to subscribe for that. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Do please subscribe and I will see you next week. Bye everyone. Hope you have a great day.